Hi, today I'm going to share with you what do I do in a consultation? How does it actually run? So you can briefly break it down to four different sections. The first one is what we call history taking. When we take a history of an animal, what we are actually doing is wanting to understand the background of the animal itself. And this usually consists of a sort of a three different parts. One is the any history, any medical history that the animal had before from any other vets or previous uh, seen in sort of previous consultations, or that should be the back of my mind before I even see the animal. Um, so if there is a, if it's referral from another vet practice, or if you just move down, there's more notes from other vet practices. Um, I should certainly would like to have that before I see the animal. This allows us to have a good, complete uh, sort of a medical. Uh, understanding of this particular individual before we actually a uh, uh, that that was that's going to affect how we sort of uh, uh, approach this particular individual and also uh, with the, the diagnosis as well like any drug allergies or anything like that the second bit of history taking is uh, from the owners so I'll ask the owners more specifically about the animal about how uh, how this uh, particular issue is bothering the pet like is it lame how long has it been lame for which like is it lame did anything happen before the lameness occurred or if it is uh, say is presented with a diarrhea so i ask uh, how long has the diarrhea been is there any blood inside there was there anything specific that they have given that potentially could have caused a diarrhea uh, so very very specific questions to hone down to exactly what this particular symptom what this particular problem is to allow me to understand better of how to approach the case the last bit of history is uh, also very important and uh, last but not least is uh, how is it actually affecting the owner how is it uh, what exactly is the issue uh, how is this particular problem affecting the owner for example if uh, the owner says that my cat is uh, itchy scratching um, yes the skin is a problem but some owners they talk about you know they can't sleep the whole night because they, all they hear is the cat scratching so I would like to know how is it actually affecting the owner as well because that is also quite important in terms of my approach and uh, what is the outcome that I hope to deliver the uh, desirable outcome that I want to be able to help both the pet owner and the animal and the pet so that's history taking the second bit is um, examination so this is where I actually examine uh, the animal and this is also divided into two different parts one is um, to actually Without touching the animal, just watch the animal, observe in its own sort of uh, in its own being. Without me um, touching the animal in the first place, how they walk, how they stand, how they sit, how they breathe. Is it with uh, labor? Is it with difficulty? Or is it pretty relaxed? So this allows me to have a rough understanding of what is the, how is the animal being affected in its whole compared to just trying to hone down to that little uh, uh, problem. Um, then the second bit of it then that is where we talk about the hands-on approach whereby we will be examining the animal from head to tail uh, doing all your different checkpoints to look at the teeth eyes and all the various body parts that uh, we are interested in then finally I'll go into hone down into the most uh, problematic the most painful bit like if the dog was lame in the left foreleg the left foreleg is probably the last uh, organ which I would uh, examine um, because uh, it causes the most pain and sometimes that pain would make all the other examinations uh, would affect the results of all the other examinations so that is sort of how I'll do it if there's any sort of further testing then we may do it from that like if uh, the ears are itchy you want to do a cytology to look into the ears um, so we do a little microscope uh, we do a you know, cotton bud into the ears put it on a microscope slide look under the slide so these are little additional examinations that you can perform um, for your for, for the pet then that is where my brain starts thinking a little bit. Okay, to say that okay, what is the sort of uh, the, the the third step of the consultation is talking about the uh, differential diagnosis or uh, possible reasons for why the animal is acting the same way uh, or the way that is done. Sometimes it's straightforward, you know, like a dog jump off the tree or jump off the uh, the wall and uh, breaks the leg, so that is a diagnosis as a fracture. Sometimes it's not so straightforward, like. A uh, dog that is uh, drinking more than usual. So, is it a urinary tract infection? Is it a uh, diabetes? Uh, so, there's quite a few sort of possibilities. Is what we call differential diagnosis. So, we had sort of a list all those out. Finally, the last step of the entire consultation is that we have to make a plan. 
what are we going to do next? Are we going to find out more things? Are we going to investigate further? Or are we going to instill some form of treatment? So usually, the, uh, whatever I do usually lies in the one or uh, two categories. Okay, uh, The first category is um, uh, diagnostics, which whereby we would be recommending uh, further testing to ascertain the diagnosis or the component the diagnosis or rule out something. So it doesn't really help the animal per se because we're not actually treating the animal, but we're just wanting to find out more because as we know the best treatment is the one that suits the diagnosis best and you can only give the most effective treatment if you actually know what the diagnosis is. So uh, the um, a good example would be back to what we're discussing about uh, sort of drinking and weighing more than usual. The treatment for a urinary tract infection is very very different from the treatment from diabetes obviously so we need to know the difference before we can start treating so that is what we call the diagnostic side of things then the second th side of things is what we call therapeutics and that is when we actually do something or give something or prescribe something that actually helps the animal sometimes sometimes you know uh, the therapeutics and diagnosis can be quite similar uh, they, they, they can almost sort of uh, be the same thing but usually it lies in one of these two categories and with this in mind, this is how a vet sort of, uh, oh, well, how, how I think, and what goes through my head during consultation, uh, from the start to the finish, history taking, understanding all about the animal before, and the uh, pet owner before I even touch the animal, examination, actually physically checking out the animal to see what I can find. Okay, so history taking is what the owner tells me. Um, examination is what I find myself. Then we have the diagnosis, a uh, differential diagnosis uh, stage whereby we uh, make uh, educated guess or deduction uh, of uh, what the possible diagnosis is. Finally comes the treatment plan, whether it is uh, finding out more or to actually treat the animal for what the problem is. And this are the sort of four stages that goes through my head and most vets that I know of when they conduct consultation. I hope this has been useful. Comment below if you can think of uh, any specific uh, examination that your vet has done that caused you to go, wow, that was very, very interesting, or anything you don't understand or what your vet has done, comment below. And uh, I look forward to see you in the next live event. This is Amity.